Now for question number four from the review chapter, uh, the chapter three review of the Mechanics 1 M1 International A level textbook, the new book, page 50, question number four. So a particle P of mass five kilograms is moving under the action of a constant force F newtons. At time equals zero, P has a velocity of five I minus three J meters per second. And at time equals 4 seconds, the velocity of P is minus 11 I plus 5 J meters per second. Find the acceleration of P in terms of I and J. Okay, so we have a constant force, so therefore we have a constant a acceleration. And uh, we know velocity at 0, which is initial velocity, 5 I minus 3 J. I like to use column vectors for my working out. We know the velocity after 4 seconds, so that's V is uh, minus 11 I and plus 5 J. And we know time is 4 seconds, we need to find the acceleration. So we can use the equation of motion V equals U plus AT. So we know the, that V is minus 11, 5. We know that U is 5 minus 3. And we know A, well, we have to find A. Sorry about that. <coughs> plus A, we have to find A times 4, which is 4A. Okay, so we need to find what A is, so we can just subtract these two uh, vectors. So we can say that's uh, going to be minus 11 minus 5 and 5 minus minus 3, which is 5 plus 3, is equal to 4a. So we can say a, 4a is equal to minus 16, 8. Therefore, a is going to be equal to uh, minus 16 over 4, which is minus 4, and 8 over 4, which is 2. So the acceleration in terms of i and j is minus 4i plus 2j. That's the answer to question Part A, the acceleration in terms of I and J. Okay, then part B says find the magnitude of the force F. So F is equal to the mass times the acceleration. Okay, the mass times it. So we want to find the magnitude of Therefore, the magnitude of the force is going to be the mass, the mass times the magnitude of the acceleration. Okay, so it's the same. So therefore, you're going to have the magnitude of the force is going to be the mass which is 5 kilograms times the magnitude of the acceleration which is going to be 4 squared plus um, 2 squared so it's going to be 5 times the square root of that 16 plus 4 which is 5 times root 20 which if you think about what's 5 root 20 that's going to be uh, 4 times 5 so it would be 10 root 2 okay let's just make sure Okay, so you're going to have 5 times the square root of uh, 4 squared plus 2 squared, which gives you 10 root 5. Whoops, what did I say? Or 10 root 2, 10 root 5. Silly mistake of mine. Yes, because, let me just correct that. <clears throat> this is 5 times the square root of 4 times 5 isn't it? yes so it's 5 times 2 which is 10 10 times root 5 silly mistake okay so 10 root 5 10 root 5 which to 3sf is 22.4 so that's 22.4 newtons uh, 22.4 newtons just make that neater that's that's going to be 10 root 5 which is 22.4 newtons Okay, it didn't say leave it as an exact answer, so either of these will be correct. Okay, that's the magnitude of F. Okay, next, it says at time equals 6 seconds, P is at the point A with position vector 28I plus 6J. Okay, at time equals T 6 seconds, P is at the point A with position vector 28I plus 6J relative to a fixed origin O. At this instant, the force F is removed and P then moves with a constant velocity. Two seconds after the force has been removed, P is at the point B. Calculate the distance of B from O. All right, so basically, um, what we have here is at time equals six seconds, there's no more acceleration. So it's going to be moving at a constant velocity. So its position, okay, two seconds after the force has been removed. So this T here represents two seconds after the force is removed. is going to be its initial position, which is at the point when the force has stopped being acting, plus velocity, 
which will be its velocity after s uh, six seconds. Its velocity is, is going to be um, the velocity that it's on, okay, after that initial six seconds times t, okay, r equals r zero plus v t. So basically, what we need to do is we need to find the velocity after six seconds in the initial while it's still under the action of the force. Okay, so we need to find the velocity after six seconds. We know the velocity at zero seconds, I'm talking about when the force was acting, is uh, five and minus three j. That's five and, oops, five and minus three. I hope it's not lagging too much. Okay, that's five and minus three. And we also know the acceleration that it was under before the force was removed was minus 4, 2, as we found earlier. Minus 4, 1, 2. Okay. And so, of course, we know the time is 6 seconds it's taken for this to, to occur. So we know that the velocity at 6 seconds, which is going to be its velocity in this new situation, once the force has been removed, is going to be um, its initial velocity, which is v0 which is it's like its initial velocity which is 5 minus 3 plus its acceleration times time but 6 times acceleration that it was under before force was removed okay so that's velocity after 6 seconds which is this velocity here in the new situation is going to be minus 5 uh, sorry 5 minus 24 which is minus 19 and minus 3 plus 12 which is 9 minus 19 and 9 that's the velocity here in the situation when this is going to be its, its velocity that it's going to be on after the force has been removed that's the velocity it reached at 6 seconds which is now the force is removed so it's going to continue with this constant velocity now it's going to be constant velocity so here our velocity is minus 19 9 okay and our initial position at time equals uh, 0 time equals 0 now is at the point when it got to this position after that first six seconds so the r zero in this case is now 28 and six and the time is here two seconds because it says two seconds after the force is removed it revives at b so that its position at b is going to be when time equals two and we need to find the position vector at b which is when t equals two so we can say after two seconds its position vector is going to be 28 six plus two times the velocity which is minus 19 9 so we have its position vector after two seconds which is going to be its position vector at b is going to be 28 minus 38 which is minus 10 and 6 plus 18 which is 24 so minus 10 and 24 so therefore it's asking us for the the distance from O to B this is a position vector at B so this is like the vector from O to B O to B is going to be minus 10 24 all right so they want us to find the distance from O to B so O to B the magnitude of O to B is going to be the square root of 10 squared plus 24 squared so we just the square root of 10 squared plus 24 squared which gives us 26 that's 26 I think this is meters 26 meters is it meters yeah meters okay so there we have it there's the answer this was basically this is acceleration meters per second squared the unit um, and there we have the answer to this question I think the question was about part C. So I hope you understood that basically it's going with a constant velocity for six seconds, which is A. So that means, so it's going at constant acceleration for six seconds. Okay, so it reaches A, and this will be the velocity at the point A. Now, the force is removed, so it's going to continue on with the same, this, this velocity. The velocity now will be constant. Okay, it moves with this constant velocity, which is this. So this is the velocity now, and it's moving. Um, for two seconds until it reaches b under this constant velocity and this was the position it was at when it started this new motion of constant velocity so after two seconds r equals r zero plus vt so r zero initial position vector plus two times 
its velocity vector and that will do, give you position of the point at uh, or the particle at when it's got to B therefore they asked us for the distance from B to O which is basically this is the position vector of B which is O to B so the distance O to B is going to be the magnitude of the vector which is 10 squared plus 24 squared which gives you 26 meters I hope that was clear